Have you ever gazed up at the night sky and wondered about the shimmering distant stars? Well, if you are curious about the wonders of the universe, then let me introduce you to the Andromeda Galaxy. The Andromeda Galaxy, also known as Messier 31 or M31, is a majestic spiral galaxy located approximately 2.5 million light years away from our own Milky Way. That's a distance so vast that it's hard to even imagine. But just think, the light that we see from Andromeda today actually left the galaxy over 2 million years ago. But what makes the Andromeda Galaxy so fascinating? For starters, it's huge. In fact, it's the largest galaxy in our local group of galaxies, which includes the Milky Way and several smaller galaxies. And when I say large, I mean it. The Andromeda Galaxy has a diameter of over 220,000 light years, making it more than twice the size of our own galaxy. But that's not all. The Andromeda Galaxy is also home to a mind-boggling number of stars. Estimates range from 1 trillion to 1.5 trillion stars. And if that's not enough, scientists believe that there may be a massive black hole at the center of the galaxy, with a mass that's equivalent to be over 100 million suns. But wait, there's more! A surprising new discovery close to the Andromeda Galaxy. A fresh, large blue gas cloud has been spotted close to Andromeda, the galaxy we assumed we knew well enough. Why have we never found it before? You will get to know more details about this discovery as we dive into the subject. However, before getting started with the video officially, here's a quick reminder that you can subscribe for free and like the video so that we can boost the algorithm. Comments are most welcomed. The Relentless Effort Even with this thorough study, we still have a lot more to learn about the sky after using hundreds of telescopes on the ground and in space. The recent discovery of a gas cloud close to the Andromeda Galaxy shows that there are still plenty of mysteries to be discovered in the sky. This cloud was unknown for many years, and its origins are still a mystery. There is still a lot to learn. Astronomical photography is now easier than ever, since digital detectors are so reasonably priced and of such excellent quality. Because of this, there is now a growing tendency among astronomy fans to focus on a certain area of the sky and make exposures that are similar to long-term exposures in order to find any faint fuzzies that may be present there. A blue ghostly figure. Andromeda is seen in this image. And a blue phantom figure may be seen hovering over it. And what is that? It's an extremely unique and fascinating find from the nearby Andromeda galaxy. In 2022, independent astronomers Jan Sainte, Xavier Strautner, and Marcel Dreschler made this finding. They discovered something that had previously been missed by earlier studies by employing straightforward tactics, like using various filters, and monitoring the same place for an extended period of time, a concept known as long exposure. They made the decision to concentrate their efforts on the Andromeda Galaxy, a spiral galaxy 2.5 million light years away that resembles the Milky Way and has been researched by scientists for more than a century. They assumed that any remaining discoveries would be minor isolated components such as nebulae in the galaxy itself, since its most prominent characteristics had already been mapped. In the process, they unintentionally discovered a galaxy-faring object. It initially didn't make sense because it appeared to be too large to be related to Andromeda. It was only detected after a 160-hour exposure using the 4-meter-long Canada-France-Hawaii telescope with a 400-megapixel sensor, giving the impression that an odd arc was extending farther away from Andromeda. Independent observations of this item showed it to be an oxygen cloud or arc, also known as M31 Oxygen Emission Arc or Straightener Drexler 70. Item 1. Dressler and Strautner were informed of Sainte's findings for the review and analysis. They were shocked to see an enormous and elongated structure next to it that was almost as big as the Andromeda Galaxy as they carefully examined the images. The nebula was made visible when Sainte employed a filter to take pictures that only allowed the blue-green light from doubly ionized oxygen atoms to get through, atoms that have lost two of their outer electrons, a frequent occurrence in massive gas clouds. Since it was the first time a comprehensive map of the sky surrounding Andromeda has ever been made, the employment of this filter was largely motivated by his interest. Sainte captured deep photos during the same observation period using a separate filter that was sensitive to light from hydrogen atoms. Although there were many gas clouds nearby Andromeda, most likely nebulae from our Milky Way in the same area of the sky as Andromeda. Nothing matched the nebula's size and shape in terms of oxygen content. The researchers questioned whether the cloud in Sainte's photographs was an anomaly of some kind, such as light that was bent by his telescope. The researchers asked renowned amateur astronomer Bray Falls to use his own telescope to view the cloud in order to confirm this. 
Falls also noticed the nebula, verifying its existence. The crew was ultimately convinced that the object was real after observations from five telescopes in France, California, and New Mexico, earning it the moniker Strotner Dreschler St. Object 1, SDSO-1. But I'm sure everyone is still wondering, what is it? The results of the collaboration between amateur astronomers Robert Fresen, Michael Scholl, and Stefan Keimswinger were published in the American Astronomical Society's publication research notes of the AAAS after consulting with experts. Although intriguing, the nebula's origin is still very difficult to pinpoint. This magnificent image of Andromeda was taken in visible light using red, green, and blue filters. However, Strotner Dreschler Sainte Object 1, a massive cloud, is not visible. SDSO 1. Astronomers have investigated a variety of theories, but the gas cloud is still a mystery. Both of its curving shape and proximity to Andromeda in the night sky imply a relationship. Additionally, its relative proximity to Andromeda shows that it is bulging from the galaxy. These characteristics unquestionably suggest the connection between the cloud and the galaxy, even though they do not establish it. If SDS-01 is actually a part of Andromeda but outside of it, the cloud would have a length of tens of thousands of light years and would rank among the galaxy's greatest coherent structures. The cloud may be made of gas ejected by the stars it contains if it is found in Andromeda's gigantic halo a widely circular sweep of stars around the galaxy. However, since hydrogen makes up the majority of its stars, a lot of hydrogen should be visible. There wasn't enough to see, as Sainte demonstrated with this hydrogen-detecting filter. The Milky Way and Andromeda are sandwiched by SDS-01, which may shed light on how they interact. Their unique halos may collide as they pass one another in space, compressing any diffuse gas into a curved bow wave that resembles that from a boat traveling through the water. This still does not explain the absence of hydrogen, because if this were the case, the cloud would not be merely near Andromeda but nearly midway between the two galaxies. It's possible that the cloud, which appears to be in the Andromeda galaxy, but is actually a nebula in the Milky Way, is much closer to us. These planetary nebulae are made of gas that has been released from dying stars and is primarily made up of oxygen and hydrogen. This gives the impression that they are illuminated because of the light that these two components emit. The lack of hydrogen in SDS-01 is still peculiar though. It is possible that SDS-01 is the remnant of the Milky Way star that exploded like a supernova, but it should be glowing in radio waves and ultraviolet radiation. However, when studying old images of Andromeda, the researchers found no illumination from the nebula at any other wavelengths, including as X-rays, visible or infrared radiation. There is no answer that fully explains all of the information at hand, and this is obviously perplexing. However, this is also what excites scientists the most. We became scholars to tackle riddles, and we're excited to crack this one. Given the limited field of view of huge telescopes, it is amazing that SDS-01, a celestial body the size of three full moons, was just recently found. The problem. However, the fact that the larger telescopes missed the object because they were focused too near prevented them from seeing it in its entirety. SDS-01 is extremely faint making it challenging for even specialized observatories to find it. It took 160 hours to take the discovery and confirmation photos using only the doubly ionized oxygen filter, even after looking directly at the region of the sky where SDS-01 is located. The 3.8-meter Canada-France-Hawaii telescope, which has an amazing 378-megapixel camera and oxygen filter, was unable to find it, and this is so that the telescope can't be used to observe big, dim objects. The velocity of the gas in SDS-01 is determined by analyzing the blue shift or red shift of the color, which is done by using spectroscopy to split the light of the cloud into wavelengths. A cloud is likely connected to Andromeda if it is traveling at a similar rate. While a slower rate would indicate that the cloud is a component of our galaxy, the origin and behavior of this cloud are still unknown due to current research. Although SDS-01 is perplexing, it is also a sign of hope since it shows that there are still many intriguing objects in the universe that have not yet been found. All we need to do is uncover them by employing the proper strategies. They explain in the study they published in January 2023 that optical emission line sky surveys can be very useful in identifying various emission nebulae, such as H2 regions, planetary nebulae, supernova remnants, wind-created cavities, and outflows from stars. These studies were primarily concerned with finding H-alpha, the brightest hydrogen line emission, along with galactic plane. Since low-cost, high-sensitivity CMOS detectors and narrow passband filters with good transmission are now widely available, 
it is becoming more common for amateur astronomers to identify emission line nebulae outside of the galactic plane. They were able to come to the conclusion that the curving filamentary structure visible in the emission arc might be a high-latitude galactic supernova remnant, a planetarium nebula, close to the Milky Way or connected to the giant stellar stream and M31's halo. In order to establish a relationship with M31, more spectroscopic observations are being made. If you haven't viewed the collision between Andromeda and our galaxy has started, be sure to watch it soon after to learn more about the potential reasons. Nobody is aware of the nature of this object, its size, its distance from Earth, what caused it, or even if it was really part of the Andromeda galaxy. It might be connected to the upcoming collision between the Milky Way and Andromeda galaxies in a few billion years, according to one theory. The arc-like shape is the result of some gas from the Milky Way and Andromeda's halo interacting with one another. The placement of this object, however, precludes the validity of that theory. Another theory holds that it belongs to the Milky Way because it is much smaller and closer to Earth than anticipated. There is currently no solitary explanation for what this cloud is. In contrast to conventional planetary nebulae or star streams, it is dim, difficult to observe, and devoid of hydrogen. Scientists are currently trying to collect more information, such as the Doppler shift, in order to pinpoint the cloud's location and identify it. Hopefully, we will learn more about this item in the coming months. One of the biggest discoveries made by independent astronomers in recent years is a huge enigma, but what you think about this also matters to us. So write down your take on this discovery in the comment section below. If you enjoyed this video, please hit that thumbs up. It will help us to understand our audience and allows YouTube to suggest similar videos to you. Thanks for watching and we hope to see you at the next one.